A while back, a co-worker asked me what makes a good video game. The boys in the lab, context, I work in the lab, were talking about a game at the time, and I'm known for having opinions. I found this question kind of hard to answer. What makes a good game is many factors. Mechanics, story, the UI, responsiveness, sound design, music, direction. It's a culmination of the efforts of multiple people working towards a singular vision. I ended up not really answering the question because it's a hard one to answer on the spot. I got distracted by my work and I got talked over anyway. But it made me think, how do you declare that a game is good? What's the criteria? A friend of mine who also dabbles in content creation asked if I wanted to make a video. And that's how this one got started. I suggested we do a review of Ace Combat 7, since I convinced him to play it at the time. We'll be collaborating on a different AC7 video, but it's gonna take some time. Simultaneously, I wanted to get back into making reviews, so here we are, extremely late to the party. Now then, time to answer the question, what makes Ace Combat 7 a good video game? Ace Combat 7 is an arcade flight combat game. That's obvious, of course, but let's break it down for those who don't know. First, I have to talk about the controls. One of the first things you'll see is the option to choose what kind of controls you want. Generally speaking, you should choose expert controls because that will let you move your aircraft the way it's supposed to be controlled. You have full control over your roll, pitch, yaw, etc. If you're brand spanking new to flight games, you may consider choosing standard controls. These controls make it easier to move around, but you don't have your full range of motion. Turning, a very important part of air combat, becomes a gentle sloping movement. You are actively nerfing yourself and making the game harder by staying on standard controls, so I suggest turning to expert as soon as you're comfortable. There's also a brief tutorial of sorts during the first mission of the game. It will tell you the basic controls, so pay attention. It doesn't tell you much more than that though, which is an issue for people brand new to the genre. Look up a video on how to play or finish the first mission and replay it on free flight mode so you can mess around and figure things out. I also recommend playing with a controller, but you can also use a flight stick or mouse and keyboard if you want. Now then, this is a game about flying, so you're always moving forward with three axes of movement. You've got a lot of planes to choose from, which you can buy using currency obtained from sorties. Each of these planes have their own characteristics and weaponry to choose from. Most of these are multi-role craft, as is the real-life trend, and the next biggest category are the fighters. There are a few attacker-type aircraft in the game, but honestly, they aren't worth it outside of a couple of missions. Sorry, A-10 fanboys. Besides the flying, you'll also be blowing a lot of stuff up. Of course, there are enemies to contend with. Aircraft, AA, SAMs, helicopters, and even ships will all be trying to shoot you down. Your job is to smack them in the face with a sidewinder. Most missions will have a component that isn't just destroying the enemy, such as avoiding spotlights or radar circles or even boss enemies. Pay attention to the briefings so you can prepare accordingly. How does all of this work in practice? Well. The joy of playing Ace Combat comes from all of the micro decisions you make as you play. Imagine you're in a big furball of a dogfight. You're constantly turning and twisting, dodging missiles, firing your own, keeping track of enemies around you, knowing your missiles will have a better chance to hit if they're launched on the same vector as an enemy, watching the radar for those little missile blips, firing your gun as something flies in front of you. There's a lot going on. It's these intense moments of air combat that get your neurons firing on all cylinders. It's a thrill ride, a roller coaster that you're in control of. From the aircraft you choose, to the parts you equip, to your special weapon, to your own strategies as the fight develops, every decision you make impacts your success. It's hard to really describe what it feels like playing ace combat. In some ways, it's very comparable to a shooter, but it's not as twitchy. I still go back to it sometimes, four years after launch. I play through the whole game on a fresh save just for this review, and it's still a good time. Simply put, the fun factor of playing this game is enough to keep it in my mental list of top 10 games. Ace Combat as a franchise is not particularly known for its storytelling, with the exception of Ace Combat 5. That game is a banger and y'all should play it. But Ace Combat in general is about conflict. 
We've all seen war movies at some point, but most of them don't really have the nuance to truly show what war does to everyone involved, be it the toll it takes on its participants or the human cost of fighting. If you want a good example of what war does to people, I suggest watching 2022's All Quiet on the Western Front. You're not going to find it in Ace Combat 7. AC7 makes an attempt at having some depth, but it really just comes down to the dangers of AI on the battlefield and everyone eventually realizing that they've been had by shadowy corporate entities. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. Or, in other words, everything is Belka's fault. If you know, you know. As a side note, if you really want to get into the story, there are lots of little details scattered around the game that are callbacks to previous games and characters. Hell, a major character from Ace Combat 5 is a plot point in AC7. You can find a lot of details online if you want them, and the Ace Combat community is pretty active. We even brought our own memes. Roger that, Basilisk 1. Mission accomplished. All prisoners of war will be treated in accordance with international law. We've even brought pizza. Now, I know I'm being kind of hard on the story in a game about breaking the laws of physics to blow up flying aircraft carriers, but it's honestly serviceable. Most characters are memorable despite not having a lot of depth. It's entertaining enough as a way to set up major story beats and get you to fly through a canyon or whatever, and it's certainly not realistic by any means. But you're not here for the story. You're here to have fun. Not every game has to be cyberpunk, or God of War, or near Automata. Okay, it's time to talk about my favorite part of this game. The music in AC7 fucking slaps. I'm listening to the OST right now as I'm writing this. Just listen to a little bit of Magic Spear. Or the major theme of the game, Daredevil. Or Archange, when the sky starts singing Latin and you know shit is about to go down. There's a video by 8-Bit Music Theory on Ace Combat 7, and his analysis is excellent. Link to that video in the description. The thing that he pointed out that just clicks and makes me completely understand the music in this game is that it has forward momentum through rhythm. The beat is driving you forward. Remember how you're in a jet and you can only go forward? The music is literally encouraging you to do that. You're on a mission. You're the hero. And you're going to get the job done, goddammit. I'm not really educated in music theory, so I don't think I have the words to describe how the soundtrack can elicit feelings in me, but it's so good at it. 
The OST covers a wide range of styles, mostly using an orchestra, but occasionally throwing in rock and roll elements like the guitar and Magic Spear. Sometimes it leans more electronic, like the Four Greys hangar in the early part of the game. The music also makes heavy use of leitmotifs, which, if you don't know, is a recurring theme in the music. This really helps swell the old emotions when you realize, in the middle of a big fight, oh, that's my theme. There are also tracks that complement story cutscenes very well, immediately setting the mood for whatever's happening. I feel like those tracks get less love than the ones that play during missions, but they're no less good. Composer Keiki Kobayashi and the Project Aces sound team are damn geniuses. Another video I'd like to shout out is Marco Meatball's video on Daredevil, one of the most immediately recognizable tracks on the game. If you're unfamiliar with the game and you just want to see a reaction to the music to see how it makes people feel, it's a great video. Link in the description. So, in general, I really love this game. It hits all the right buttons for me. The action, the music, the set pieces, the jet porn, all comes together to create an experience that has been living in my head rent-free since 2019. In a game that takes maybe 10 hours to finish, I've accumulated almost 90 hours over the past few years. That might not seem like very much considering the time frame, but consider that missions take maybe 10 to 20 minutes on average. Probably half of those hours are just mission 11 fleet destruction, so I could just blow shit up. God, it's satisfying sinking that stupid runway platform. For the reasons I've talked about in this video, even taking into account some criticisms, I would absolutely consider Ace Combat 7 a good game. I know that isn't really an answer to the original question, what makes a good video game? But you see, it's a complicated question. Games are subjective, and they're not all the same. Neither are the people playing them. Hopefully I've convinced someone to give Ace Combat a try, or at least validated everyone who already loves the franchise. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Keep an eye out for the collab video with my buddy David for a fresh perspective on the game. Fingers crossed that we can get that one out soon. If you like this video, consider subscribing. It feels good to be back creating stuff like this, and some encouragement would go a long way to keeping me motivated after the luster wears off. For anyone who enjoyed my Nier Automata video, uh, six years ago? Jesus. Let me know if you'd like to see me stream Nier Replicant. I've been meaning to get around to that one. Once again, thanks for watching.